Is this thing on? Okie dokie, it sure looks like it is. Yep, yep. Let's do that, and then this. Hey everybody, what's going on? My camera's real droopy, so I have to adjust it. That's, that's a little better. Well, post CAD model the day stream. Let's see, let's see how this goes. Um, what's up, Yaya? Yeah, yeah, it's good to see you again. So, um, you know, after posting the last CAD model of the day, I've been receiving a lot of well wishes and awesome comments across all the platforms. And, you know, it just makes me so happy that, you know, the the project effect affected so many people in the way that it did. But, like I said, the show, the show must go on. There will be streams in the future. There will be content in the future. Although I haven't worked out exactly what the plan is, you know, what I have in mind. Including for this stream. You know, I don't really know exactly what I'm going to be doing this stream. You know, um, you know, I'll do anything. You know, we can look at, you know, the the what's new in the SolidWorks releases. That's something that I still have to do. Um, I can try to install SolidWorks on a Steam Deck because I think that would be kind of funny. Or if any one of you want me to like pull up a model that I did in the past and just like go through it and just kind of review it. You know, if you guys had a model that was like, I wonder how he did that. You know, feel free to put it in the chat. You know, I'll take a look at it. This is the, uh, this is the elective period, the free period, so to speak. Well, yeah, or, or other than that, you know, something I eventually want to do or need to do is to actually gather all... 1,100 models of CAD model of the day into one place because, um, yeah, I, it, the, the project spans four different computers, you know, uh, all, all the way from my, the, the laptop that I used to co in college to this, uh, fancy little framework laptop. And then when I, once I have it in one place, you know, then I can, uh, well, you know, I can pull up at any one of them, like, you know, pretty quickly. Instead of having to download it from Google Drive. Yeah, or, you know, I can kind of do some of them where... Go to my my drive. Let's run SolidWorks here. It looks like someone needs to do some tedious backup in, and yeah, it, it is never fun. I agree. You know, but uh, you, know, you do it to some chill music like the ones we're listening to right now, and. I'll probably pull some models up while we go.
right, so this is the files I have in the in the Explorer directory. Do you have your playlist of Cordia's music somewhere that we can access? Yes, I can. I can absolutely find it. trying to think what's the best way for you to access that. I would say on YouTube's a pretty good place. This is actually not him. Oh, I probably have it in the description of my own video, to be honest. Cordio.bandcamp. He also has a YouTube channel for sure. I, th this I know. Oh my gosh, he has so much music now. Hey yo, he's got a shirt. I'm gonna have to look into that. Yeah, let me keep trying so. So if I uh, search a song by him, for example, Rock Coin, which is playing right now. Let's see if he has any playlists here. Ambient music, let's see what he has in here. heard these songs. Cordio music. This might be exactly what you need. Better times, inevitable coda. Yep, this is this this is it. And yeah, let me get that link. So if, if you ever like, if you ever just want to um, search through his music, I wonder if I could honestly add this to my YouTube channel. Let's see. Save playlist, save to library. I bet now I can go ahead. Playlists. This is. Yeah, I'll play around with it. So I have this in my channel. The left man menu, as far as I know. Yeah, but I, I thought there was a function where you could get a playlist and feature it on your channel. Uh, I'll, I'll look into that. But for now, you have the... You have the playlist link there. Yeah, but extreme... Extremely chill music. Yeah, so I wonder if I could, uh, how much I can download at a time. I think it's um, uh, limited by uh, file size, basically. You can't download more than two gigabytes at a time. I know there is a, f there is a model of the day I think it's like 114 or something like that where it's just tens of gigabytes because I have like video footage so I'll probably have to prune that out let's take that out and I make the collection yeah 
You know, look all the way back in 2020. That was a different time. It's probably AVI footage, to be uh, perfectly honest. Oh yeah, and here's a couple of zero zeros. So the zeros are um, models that I tried to make, but I had to um, basically give up on. I had to punt them away for one reason or another. Some I came back to. Like I know, I definitely did the toy snake at one point. I forget. I just forget which number it is mask. I don't know what this is. Let's check it out. I don't know what this is without downloading it. Oh god, gosh damn. Oh well, I can at least do this. Haha. <laughs> Movement 232. So it's this. So it looks like I wasn't able to make it work and was running out of time. A beanie baby. So I tried to make a beanie baby at some some point. Um, intermediate engineering helmet. Oh, this is cool. So and it's I should I should definitely revisit this. So um, basically, there is a game that is called Dead Space. Came out around 2007. Yeah, it's a horror game, and it's one of my favorite games. Um, they are actually remaking it. So basically, you are the hotshot engineer Isaac Clark, this guy. You know who is responsible for maintaining a basically a spaceship, right? And it gets taken over by zombie aliens. You know to put to put it simply. And this is his, uh, this is his, uh, getup. His space suit. So it looks like I tried to model the, the helmet at one point. But as you can see, it has an extreme amount of detail. But when the remake releases, you know, I'll probably revisit that. And space. Two thousand eight. So you all can watch me <laughs> play this. All right, so twenty twenty three. So that's just right around the corner. Yeah, so I'm pretty. I'm pretty excited for that. And then Toy Snake, I, I'm pretty sure I revisited. Alright, so let's download some of these. The thing is, I don't want to make download too much at a time. So let's maybe try the first 50. Download. Let's check out, so, so what does that? I'm gonna check out what I think has, yeah, I think it's 105, the Lego money. Bruh. Oh, they're, they're MP4s actually, but there's just a lot of them. You see each one of these line items is four gigs. It's actually filmed with a camera that I'm using as a using as the web, I guess the webcam right now it's a camcorder but it records in 4k so I was just testing out some of the function there oh, did it? oh it's working on it all right so 1.8 gigs so it seems 50 at a time is a pretty good uh... so let's get from 51 to 100. 
I'm gonna wait for this to finish. And then once that, once this finishes, you know, I can open some of them in SolidWorks and we'll check them out. your biggest mer biggest model in terms of feature count um, I don't know definitively but I want to say it's the Ketten Krod, which is day 500 that has to be if not if it's not the most feature heavy model it is a, a, a top contender for sure there's dozens of features in that and that also reminds me um, you know I'd like to make a video of like um, I guess model superlatives where I say the smallest model in terms of physical size you know this this one's kind of weird so the smallest model I have in physical or I've ever modeled in physical size is a red blood cell to scale 7 microns Thalors has the precision to do that which is kind of funny Ethernet. Let's get it off Wi Fi. Okay, so we have access to the full speed. A lot of the, oh, the red blood cell? Yeah, it would just be... Yeah, I mean, to, to, to be... It, it's really funny because... Um, you wouldn't... Uh, so the, the, the three... The, the, the size of a layer height and a red blood cell are like kind of comparable. It's really weird. So, and let me, let, let me make sure I get my... Back straight. So, a human red blood cell Wikipedia. So, here we go. Red blood cell, uh, six to eight microns in diameter, micrometers. So my Mark Forge can has a maximum uh, resolution of 50 microns, which is so a layer should be six of these stacked, basically six times eight to 48, so give or take. Kind of comparable in size, which is very weird, but yeah, it would just daub one bit of plastic and be done. Failed? What the heck? You know, I might be, I might be going for too much. I mean, this is why I want to get it out of Google Drive. It's just really, really weird. Let's try like 20 at a time or something like that. Load. Or maybe it's because I switched networks. Could be that too. I'm gonna wait for it to zip files. Here in the meantime, I have a couple stuff downloaded. details <laughs> this part is extremely heavy honestly do you know what, what would 
what would be pretty cool. And I, w I would definitely need help with this. I don't know how to do this. But what I would like to do is maybe make a SOLIDWORKS API that would open a model and basically take the statistics down for not so not only would it measure how many features I used, but it would measure how often I use different features. So you know you would expect to see a lot of box extrudes, a lot of sweeps, a lot of fillets. But you know to get you know over 1,100 models of of uh, uh, you know all different kinds of styles and engineering disciplines. I think it would be very interesting to see if there is a feature that I like never use at all or a feature that I use very often. I suspect indent would be there a lot. I use it in basically in every other model. But the thing is I would need like an API or something. I mean, it could do it manually. It would just take forever. It would take five ever to do, <laughs> to do that. Vinci and paint.net. Saving some resources. Right, how's it going? All right, at least it's not eating up all of my memory. Bro, how is Task Manager using 38%? Of the, of the CPU right now. First update speed. Oh, let's do normal. Okay, this makes sense. It just wasn't updating at all. Ethernet's being maxed out because it's <laughs> probably downloading that thing. Hey, that one completed. All right, I'm gonna try another 100. So, well, actually, I'll do until 100 because 105 is gonna have to be kind of special. But we'll let that go. So I think it failed because I plugged in my Ethernet and it interrupted in interrupted the network. Can reach out to Deepak Gupta for that. Yeah, I'm sure he'll love to help. He's a guy who's seem seemingly everywhere at once in the SolidWorks forum. It's it's very really quite interesting. Yeah, actually, this will probably be among the top. Or features in one part, although it's just very heavily multi-bodied. I could probably also turn down some of the graphics. Yeah, you know, turn out turn off ambient occlusion and real view. There we go. So that now it's performing a little bit better. Could probably also go to uh, image quality. Although it's set up pretty much where I would want it. And if I evaluate, it's 235 features. I remember using move copy bodies for everything. Yeah, honestly, it, I think before it was a little, it felt a little bit hacky, right? But honestly, I think it could be more mainstream now, especially in 2023 that um, you can now put equations and other, and basically other um, parameters for the move copy body feature. I think you're, we're going to see it, see a lot of use now. Um, it could be like a poor man's linear pattern, for example. 
Because you can, of course, copy. That's the slash copy part. Yeah, so it's just a bunch of features. It's just a sketch pattern here that is causing 12 seconds of rebuild time in a shell. So I modeled this pretty accurately. I mean, it's not 100%. But if, for example, I get a section view. Let's just do that. No circuit boards or anything, but you know, I do I, I do have this in sheet metal. That they lap just like in and in, in, in the bend is just like in the actual model. I don't know, it's just a cool, cool looking synthesizer. Alright, so, you know, if I ever if I ever go down the road of like testing computers for like use with SOLIDWORKS, this is definitely like a benchmark model. It's just, just very, very uh, strenuous for SOLIDWORKS. 111 bodies. Okay, here it is. One to twenty is going to be joining the party here. So let's take a look at some of the very early CAD model the day models. Let me, well, let me check the download first. Oh no, that's where all the videos are coming from. Bro, why didn't it zip it up? Oh my god, what a mess. Well, I'm gonna have to do a lot of cleanup. It's fine. I'm just gonna let it go. This is pretty cool. So, the first model I ever did, if you can, if you look here, see that icon looks kind of unique. Can I use magnifier? Yeah, see that? That's a flexible part. I think that was brand new for SolidWorks 2020 back in the back in the day. He's got the little three diverging arrows, which means I'm gonna pin this to the taskbar because that could be helpful. I should be able to move this blue. Oh, uh, we want to automatically update. Automatically update. So wherever I move these balloons around, the string goes and follows them. 
or the balloon itself. Yep, it's pretty simple. Yeah, Pennywise would love this model. It's because I'm a clown. <laughs> and it's nothing to do with the balloon. <laughs> it was made by an actual clown. I installed SolidWorks a couple weeks ago. Created a task force sh shortcut using so SolidWorks gen generic main win title. Keeps o opening in a new taskbar instance for some reason. Hmm. That's interesting. Immediately off the top of the top of my head, I wouldn't know what would cause that. And th the only reason I say that is because you might notice the way I launch SolidWorks is by hitting Win Win key, and then I type in SolidWorks like I'm in some kind of like command-based terminal or something like that. Oh, that's something I could do too. I can uh, uh, try out 3D experience products. Wee balloons. Oh yeah, this is the part that you wouldn't really see in pictures. The actual function of these. A little flexible components. Don't save. How's this going? Looks like it's downloaded all the garbage. Alright, so it looks like this is 3D print videos. I don't know what it's making though. Oh, this is the battery cover. I remember this. I, I actually still have it. I think that's like model of the day 57, I wanna say. I'll be right back, I'll go get it. I know, I know where this is. batteries in this so I can't actually play it right now but basically this is an electronic MIDI guitar pretty cool right and it was just miss it was missing the little battery compartment okay so it, I just I bought it like this basically so then I just 3d printed the actual cover I put my own flare on it you know, those contact the batteries on um, and I, I glued a little spring in there I was think I was hoping that the that the plastic would be I guess plastic would be springy enough for this to do this by itself but it was just so thin that it actually wouldn't keep closed so I actually had to glue a spring but once I did that you know it was perfectly fine there you go But um, that's part of the reason. It's part of the uh, way I want to uh, let's say let's say clean up the data is to remove these these videos. Oh, let me change to this. Yeah, I would want to remove these videos. So if I ever need to send them to someone, you know, they, it just doesn't have all this bulk. So I'm just gonna actually delete these videos. So 
What is this? Okay, so this is 21 to 100. Yeah, so there, so my grandmother's gonna be a copy. Here, let me ex exclude that. So select all, exclude. with the same names. What is this? They look identical. Do you be that solid part? I guess I'll keep the older one. Yeah, let's do. Alright, we're building this back up. So let me get just these five here now. Download. And then I'm gonna download 105 because I know this is just filled with stuff. Completed. Okay. So let's try 105 download and I'll just delete the videos after they download it's taking a while it's kind of stinks that if you do view details it doesn't show the the size like that's that's really inconvenient so you have to download it to know the size Alright, what else we got here? Dumbbell. Ooh, this one, I think it was one of the only instances where I used uh, 3D texture. Even, oh, look at, look at me, I even put a material in this, that's fancy. The 3D texture, so if you were to 3D print this, it would actually have this diamond texture to it. Drive is the best, worst cloud surface. Yeah, no, it, it really is. Um, the Really, the only reason I use it is um, from university, they gave me an account with unlimited drive storage, pretty much. So I just, you know, for stuff like this, I just kind of threw it in there. Oh yeah, no worries. I, I knew what you meant. And it's been, it, you know, it's all right, you know, but for something that was handed to me, you know, with my university tuition, which was not cheap. You know, it, it was, it was pretty good. Even though I, I had a scholarship for a lot of it, you know, I still had to pay somewhat. I wonder how heavy this 3D texture feature is. Yeah, it is 93% of the time it takes three seconds to rebuild. I wonder how much this actually weighs. So I have this, have the material set. So if we go mass properties, Oh man, I'm slacking here. What the heck is that? It's 32.24? Hey, yo. That's... That's not 35. Here, we, we, we can fix that. You know, let me do that. I'm fixing my own work. Also, here, I think I also have the actual dumbbell. That I 
Yeah, it was it was this dumbbell specifically. Yeah, so a lot a lot of these models were stuffed around my house. Yeah, but let me show you how to make this exactly 35 pounds. Um, let's get out a magnifier. All right, so our dumbbell is too light. You could use a sensor and just test around, but I'm actually going to use a design study. So this dumbbell is too light, which means that some dimension is going to have to increase. Either um, the, not really the diameter, but the face-to-face -face distance of these hexagons, maybe that could increase. Uh, perhaps the width of each of the uh, each, each of the um, actual dumbbells could increase. You could also e even increase the handle, but first we just have to pick a dimension. Uh, we, we have to pick a dimension to actually uh, modify. And you know, let me get this out of perspective. And... Why does it look like that? Okay, let me do that. Much better. Now I can actually look at it. Put it on a white background. So it looks like it's that initial boss extrude. Well, let me just test it around to see how I built it. So if I change this to, to five, how does that work? Okay, so this is definitely a candidate. I built this with pretty good, well, the text is, oh no. What happened there? So it looks like I put... I have an equation here, but if you put distance, distance, this kind of stinks because you can't really flip the two dimensions around. It definitely needs to be flipped. Yeah, I don't know if that's the way I would have done this. Alright, so let's start correcting some of my work here. Yeah, so it looks like I was only able to measure... you know, with the calipers, the distance of this face, and then from that, derive how long this this is supposed to be. Well, I'm, I'm getting off track too at the same time, so let me see. If I made this longer, how, mu how much stuff breaks? So if I make this four, for example, centered. Alright, what a pain. I think this chamfer is really ruining our day. So I'm going to this is wait, so does it does this chamfer have any children? Okay, so it's dynamic reference. If we click on chamfer, there are it has no children, so I can suppress it. And I'm just going to re-add a more well-behaving chamfer. And I could just make this any value, really. Although I'm just going to put something that looks intuitive. Alright, so this cut loft, what is up with that? So that's fine. That's not fine. Why is this... It's also a strange feature, I think. So, boss extrude. Yeah, the way I would fix this, I would suppress 
take that and instead of a loft probably just do an extrude cut with a draft like that so you don't have to worry about it as much okay can we all right so it looks like that that sketch depends on on the face of the loft being there so we're going to right click edit sketch plane and make it this one it might still have references and sure enough it does so let's so unsuppress it uh, display delete and external we want to just delete all the external we'll fix that in a sec so if I suppress this, okay, now the sketch is still alive. If I unsuppress that, okay. Well, we're almost done here. Yeah, technically this is part of making, uh, of using a design study. You have to make sure that the part is built correctly that it can withstand changes without without breaking you know right, so this will represent the fixed height of the letters and then just having this equal will set it perfectly in the right place and then we have the 35 right in the middle there all right so now if I go ahead and make this shorter it was like 3.5 before. I don't really remember. Yep. Yeah, now it's it's acting normally. Yeah. I might suppress that 3D texture because it's gonna it's gonna be kind of irrelevant for this exercise here. So we are going to suppress both of them. Oh, what the heck? All right, that's fine, that's fine. Combine, let's combine that all into one solid. So that's just the thing without the 3D texture. Yeah, that that's true. I mean, it's it, it's probably very negligible. And what I'm giving you guys here is a framework to just uh, a, a framework to figure this stuff out. But basically, you would repeat the same steps that I do, but you just have 3D textured unsurprising. You would just have to wait longer. That would be the only difference. Yeah. So we all have some friendly features. And what's the mass looking like? Yeah, it's even less now. So now we can go to evaluate design study. Here we go. So we, we, we need to add a variable. So we're going to say add parameter. And I need to find uh, the width of the head, which I'm having trouble finding right now, to be perfectly honest with you. Oh, there it is. So I should be able to click it and name it with name. You have to type it in. Width of head. And you don't have to... This is just for human readability. It's already connected here once you click on it. So OK. A constraint we're gonna add a sensor so yeah yeah you are correct so we're gonna say the mass uh, I guess we could say this body specifically we don't have to set up an alert on it though um, but basically it starts at 3.5 we could say that maybe 4.5 I, I didn't really test it but maybe at 4.5 we know it's over 35 
pounds, but let's test it in steps of 50 thousands. So that's 21 scenarios. And the constraint is when mass is between 30, 34.9 And 35.1. And if you don't need to add goals, right? Unchecked op optimization should be able to run this. So if I hit run, uh, it can take a long time to run. That's continue running. Yeah, that's fine. It's not going to take that long. But basically, it's going to run through, it's going to take that dimension and increase it by the amount you specified and basically rebuild every scenario when the scenario does not meet the criteria it shows up in red either it is too heavy or it is too light so as you can see there is one scenario that meets our criteria and that is scenario 11 when the head is four inches wide, basically. So now it's much closer to 35 pounds. You know, within a within a fraction of a percent, actually. Yeah, 99.9 percent, .9%, basically. Present Rob fix, fixing past Rob's model naming stuff for what Futura decides to improve on present Rob. Oh my god, that's too much of a meme. Rob Sep, uh, Rob Sepsh, Rob Seption. Yeah, ain't that ain't that the truth? But yeah, that's how you would do it. And then of course you could go ahead and uh, run another design study if you wanted to make it closer. So we know that between. 4 and 4.05 is going to be a closer that is a value that's even closer to 35. So if I really wanted to, I can go back to our variable view and then say the minimum is 4, the maximum is 4.05, and the step maybe will make it one thousandth of an inch, which is pretty silly. And then say it's between 34.99 to 35.1. I don't, I think that might be a little too stringent in 51 scenarios. No, oh, actually it found it right off the gate. So basically 4.003 of an inch or 4.004 is just slightly over 35 pounds so and and you just keep repeating the process till you get the precision that you desire I'm gonna go get a drink while this finishes I'll be right back whoops didn't mean to do that I accidentally clicked my mouse when I set my headphones down So now we have fixed it, but for preservation, I'm not going to save it. So, but you, but you know how to fix it if you so desire. All right, so how is this going? Oh dear Lord, it's 165 gigs, bro. Does my hard drive even have enough space for this? I think so, but I'm going to have to like immediately, <laughs> immediately uh, start to start pruning away those videos. In the meantime, you know, not me nuking up my, nuking my own computer. It's a shampoo bottle. 
<laughs> I forgot. I named I named his knees and toes rather than heads and shoulders. Added shoulders. Uh, past Rob making present Rob laugh. What what a what a meme. Alright, be right back. I might have to go check on something. another capture card so these capture cards are kind of scary cheap on Amazon and um, they're pretty good honestly so the capture card is what's actually taking the feed from the camcorder right now so that's you know my camera's using one and the capture card is also it's also getting the getting the, the well I gotta point this way the feed from the framework computer. So I put another one, you know, just to, uh, I had the idea of maybe if I'm running renders in the back that I could, you know, have it in one corner of my stream and, you know, play games and, you know, so we can all keep an eye on it while I, you know, wait for a render to finish. And, you know, this is just a USB A to C adapter. <laughs> Me watching the stream for Rob memes. Yeah, that's, that's what that's uh, what it's all about, brother. All right, so let's see how this does. Okay, so pretty good performance, 40 features. Pretty good number there, but the heaviest one is a delete face that takes a little bit less than a second to complete. Not too bad. basically start with planes yeah I surfaced this pretty interestingly well I guess I was able to measure that side face pretty easily Copy, and then mirror. Direct editing worth the re rebuild time? I agree with that. You know, sometimes they, they solve very annoying problems very easily, and it's pretty cool. So this is the delete face. So what is it even deleting? That's the question. So split line. Oh, I see, I see. Okay, so I need to turn on um, tangent edges to actually see what's going on. So you see with all the surfacing work and all the fillets, we have a very complicated uh, kind of area to put a label on especially after the split line is applied I need to apply a label between basically these three faces so this delete face what it does is it takes those three faces and just replaces it with a tangent fill uh, a, a tangent fill surface so by putting by combining all these together it's much easier to like position and map uh, a label to it so th I mean that that the lead face is the reason it says knees and toes right now I'm 
Yeah, and then making the cap. Admittedly, I don't... I put a thread there. Yeah, I think I could have put a little bit more effort into the cap, but over overall... Oh, I mean, at least I got the, the thread in there. No, not too bad. Yeah, but the cap doesn't have any hinge or anything like that. Yeah, overall, I give myself a, a B for this model. Yeah, also could have used some edge treatment here. Like it, this should be filleted in both directions because that's, you know, you wouldn't have a sharp edge like that. Imagine your th thread with a, I mean, delete face. Yep, exactly. That thread though. Yeah, I think I used the thread tool for that. Yeah, I'll, yeah, it's just a solid B, I would say. And then when you go, and then you say tangent edges removed, then it looks like the bottle. Okay, so that's pretty cool. All right, so how's nuking my computer going? Wow, it's going great. Yeah, but definitely we have a lot here to play with. Yeah, this one's pretty cool. Hey, how's it going, man? I'm not gonna be able to pronounce your name, but I'm very glad you're here. Let me see if I can translate what you what you say. I like to talk to all of my chatters, as you can probably tell. Show a lo longitudinal section of the container. Oh, that's what Yaya said. Okay, yeah, I can help. You. I can help you with that. All right, so let's go back here. So I'll just show you all all the sections. So because longitudinal can can mean any sort of thing. Yeah, I guess that's another thing. I didn't I didn't even bother to shell this. Yeah, how would I shell this? So, thing is you got to be careful with these threads. So you either have to actually shell this before the threads, so like this. And I might be able to Oh, that's not even combined. No, oh, there's a lot. Okay, I'm, I'm dropping this to a B minus. Didn't even combine it. It's terrible. Uh, not properly. Yeah, I guess if if you're uh, agreeing with what I'm saying, then yeah. Combine. So you would combine these two. We can shell with this face. Hopefully it completes. And then thread should be able to just go on just fine. Two revolves. And moreover, even before the shell. Where are my other bodies? Uh, 
you know, you see there's also an intersection here. And that could be taken care of with indent. So target body this, say cut. So now the blue body Now the blue body has an actual, uh, what, what, what would I call it? There's an actual uh, space for it. And actually I would have to do that again after the threads are done. So indent this. Oops, I forgot to put cut. It's gonna try and actually indent it. This is a cross section. Oh, so were, were you talking about? Yeah, it might be a. Lost in translation, but. So I think we're getting good content out of this. Like that? Keep this open if you want to know more about it. Oh, I saved it. I probably did this with SolidWorks 2019, actually. If it's asking me about new, if it's asking me about new uh, file save. All right, what do you say now? Right now, thanks. Okay, great. Are you gonna try it yourself? I wonder if I can translate your name too. Tamara. Yeah, honestly, if I, uh, it, it was funny because one of my commenters uh, mentioned that I should write a book basically, or do like a lesson book and I've wanted to do that for like four years now. Make a virtual flat CAD lesson book where, you know, someone could uh, fo uh, follow along and, and where I would basically give all the dimensions, the sketches and stuff like that. And it's just, you know what I could even do? I could publish a book where it's like a challenge Where, you know, I just give a print and say, and the challenge is just model this in SolidWorks. And then, you know, so you, you, so someone who's learning can try, and then in the back of the book has like a step-by-step -step of at least how I did it. How about a series where you go through every CAD model of the day and roast past Rob and maybe rework his B minuses? Yeah, honestly, this is not too bad either. Not, not bad at all. All right, but what's what's the deal of this mushroom? So, yeah, actually, let me go here. I wouldn't expect this to be very heavy in terms of computation. But yeah, less than a second rebuild time overall. The, the worst thing being a dome. So it starts like that. Okay, so I actually do the revolve at an angle like that. Interesting. And then I just wrap the eyes. <laughs> Call too tall Toby and see how many underdefined sketches. Well, here's the thing. Okay, so I was gonna defend myself, but 
I would at least do this to find where the even if the the spline is like meant to be adjustable and that's fine and all this axis should have been defined for sure so I should just be able to do that so the thing is fully defining these I mean, you can do them for the sense of not having them move around. Oh yeah, I should do an offset too. So, and then also from here to here. Yeah, this sketch is a mess. All right, so definitely all this, all the, all these that I added should have been there. These, you know, if it was left like that, fine. But yeah, fully defining splines kind of goes against the very concept of using splines. Yeah, because sometimes you know when you build them, you just need to like go back and stretch them and see how how it is. Um, if you really don't want them to move, you can. I think you should. I, you know, honestly, just to make sure they don't move, I, I would. Well, I guess I wouldn't because I did this and, you know, I didn't, but I should have. Let's, let's put it this way. It's being a little sloppy. There, now it's happy. What is this? So I revolve like a hemisphere. Oh, yo, this is actually kind of cool. I think I use a combined... Wait, why? Why did I do this, actually? So is this combined common? It is. Actually, no, this, that, that wasn't as smart as I thought it was. I should have, one of these revolves is redundant, I'm pretty sure. Let me think about this. Okay, this one's getting a C. This, this one should have, shouldn't have been that hard. And yet, we have a, a massively underdefined sketch. So wrap puts the eyes on here, that's fine. Do tangent edges visible? That's interesting. Oh, because I probably have the edges off. There we go. Now I can say tangent edges visible. All right, so I have that. And then I dome them so they stick out a little bit. You see, that's fine. So I revolve this using the same sketch. 90, 90 degrees about the midplane. And then I do a combined common between the two hemis between the two revolves. Bro, I could have just used the revolve three. Does revolve two have any children? No, it doesn't. What the heck? So this doesn't need to be here. So wrap I think puts a dot on here. Wrap three does. Bro, this is so scuffed. When when did I make this? It was at 10. Yeah, I really don't like this one. So, Revolve 2 actually doesn't need to be here. You know, you just do the sketch. Do Revolve 3. Combine doesn't need to be here. Wrap, if I go here, I just have to project on this. And then I could circular pattern. That's missing the body, so that's that's fine. Then combine. Combine's gonna be sleeping because of this combine, which is fine.
There we go. You didn't even need Revolve 2 or Combine 1. That was silly. Alright, what do you say now? I use splines for their look, which always isn't definitive. Yeah, I think it's... In, that's why in some, some circumstances, you know, it's... Uh, it's fine to leave splines underdefined to to a result. I mean, what I had what I had here was unacceptable. All right, that's not good. All right, Tamara says I work in top secret laboratories of my com company. We have a different kind of education than your education. We design on subatomic structural grids using v VR goggles. That's pretty wild, man. That's, that's really wild, Tamara. And actually, now I remember your name. You've been you've been to my streams before. I remember. Welcome back. Yeah, regarding your API idea, you should also add start time in the day and from creation to last modification, whole project time. Yeah, I agree with that. That would be pretty cool. Although you will see ones that are greater than a day, and that is only because I started them at some day in tandem, like I'm still posting something that day I start something and I like and I and I like work on it little by little and then post it in a day though I didn't like working like that it was just too much work at one time all right so combine can go revolve can go so I think a, the way to get rid of all that right click and say purge unused features And it finds the two features that are there. Okay, yes to all. There we go. Performance should be even better now. Yeah, it was like 0.89, now it's 0.44. Man, okay, so now that I fixed it a little bit, you know, I give the, over, the overall workflow and execution, I give that Maybe a B, maybe an A even. I, I like the I like the overall method, the execution of it. C for sure. Do better, Rob. Oh, it's Toby. Oh my gosh, I I realize I <laughs> I, I I missed your stream, Toby. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Oh man, next time, shoot. Well, at least next next week is gonna be the top 16, so I'll, I'll, I'll be there for that. Well, I had a, I had a skating lesson at, uh, I think it was at 10.30, but you know, at least I could drop by. Oh man. Oh no, don't say that. <laughs> Come on, man. Oh no. <laughs> I hope I hope you're joshing me right now because this this is <laughs> this is too much, man. You know, let me here, let me I'm about to die, so here we go. I'm gonna turn this from red. Red, red to green. There we go, because I'm gonna need an extra life after that. <laughs> Yeah, now it's now it's a one up. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it green actually, because like you know, I, I totally just fixed that in a different way. Why is this wrap an underdefined sketch? Oh my god, am I am I joshing my me right now? Oh, are you kidding me? Oh my god. Was I drunk when I was making this? Bro, it's literally two relations. There we go. Oh my god. I, I think I I think I just execution I went down to a D. That's bad. Just having a circle just hanging out there. Alright. What's up next? Man, that was rough ski. Very rough. Well, 
already. I'm just gonna roast myself for giving giving an assembly this name. Hang on. Do you you guys see in this assembly dot <laughs> SLDASM? That actually sucks. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, it, it is a it, it is a, a great example of why it exists. That's just bad file management. This is also bad file management. But let's check. So how do I do it? Oh, older version file. All right, so we're gonna say edit in context. Oh, save bodies and everything's. So let's see performance. Three second rebuild time, not too bad. And looks like I just start with that. I split, I shell this out. I guess I put that in the in the revolve too. Alright, this one's looking a little bit better than the other one. Alright, see my secrets. Okay, most of these are defined. This one isn't. Okay, this isn't the worst thing ever. Because it looks like I was using this for a split feature, so I have this locked in place. It's just the end just needs to be longer than the model. So that's fine, I guess. It wasn't the massacre that wasn't that mushroom. And this was actually pretty fun to animate. Honestly, as for the overall construction of this model, pretty good, I would say. The file management, though, very bad. And here's here's what what I would do to fix it. Um, there's a couple of ways to do it. Um, I like using Pack and Go. So you go to the assembly, and then you just name this to. Um, actually, what I'll say is Beacon. So I called it a siren, but someone who knew more than I did said that um, siren is the sound. The actual rotating light is called a beacon. I did render this with PhotoView 360. Yeah, that's right. Tamara's got something else too. It's interesting to look at the Stone Age. Please don't be offended. It's just funny. Okay, well. You know, have fun with your, your VR tomorrow. Yeah, so the thing is, I don't even know what all this is. So this is, well, this is where all the features are. So I would call this a beacon master part. And the, the rough part is I can't go back. So I actually need to find out like what what is what. So that's a rotatey bit. Yeah, so I might might not do this because you know I don't I don't think it's gonna be very very fun. But yeah, I it would go to pack and go, and then you'd act, save it to something with like actual names. I mean, the file, uh, at least the, so the dangers of naming something so generically like that is, you know, especially if you use a PDM system, um, there could be a lot of cross wires if something shares the same name. So it's just in general, bad practice to name something so generally like that, but it worked for the time. So it's fine. What else we got? Peanut butter cup. Yeah, this is when I started modeling food because I'm hungry. Look, I even modeled a little, a little dollop of peanut butter or, or, or chocolate, I guess. 
So let's see the performance on this one. Should be a little bit more, actually a lot more, 15 seconds. So that's kind of heavy for what this is, right? But I prob it probably all has to do with uh, this transition here. It's hard to see, so let me turn on the lights a little bit. Yeah, but it's probably this that's causing, well, maybe you could just see. Yeah, boundary surface causes five seconds. Hey, yo, a surface flatten. So I use a surface flatten here, that's interesting. I wonder in what context did I do that? Oh, I guess it was just to see what, uh, see what the actual wrapper looks like flattened out and that's in here yeah surface flattened so you can see the little crinkles there i don't know why it's not centered oh it's because i'm in perspective yeah it sure is okay so it's mostly centered wait let's go poke around well, actually, this isn't flat tree view, so it looks like I fully define all my sketches here. So we're good. I wasn't totally trashed when I made this. I was hungry, though, clearly. Yeah, let, me, let me see if I can use a feature called Part Reviewer. So it looks like I lost part of the part of the wrapper. Create an axis. Surface offset looks like to copy this for some reason. I don't quite remember what it was. Man, that is a lot of surfaces. together and then some surface planes basically capping this off it would seem oh no I so I capped this off of the surface plane and that's fine here I just have a circle and I leave a little bit of room to try and make a transition and I remember that being kind of hard <laughs> Yeah, so I had to trim this back a little bit. So actually, I don't know why I copied the surface. So surface offset two, I bet is an offset with a thing of zero. So I copied this. I don't think that was necessary. <laughs> So surface knit. So this is the actual peanut butter cup itself, it would seem. I domed the top of it a little bit just to give it some more depth. Okay, put a plane. Okay, so I cut out a hole and this is where I actually make the little... Okay, so that could be pretty interesting to talk about. So this boundary surface so it looks like it was a loft from this edge to this point. So this one specifically. And then I just put a tangency on it. Right. What is this? Tooth apex angle 60 degrees. Eh, probably. Yeah, I could actually find out. Yeah, actually I don't define it as a as an angle, but it's probably pretty close to that. So cl a little closer to 75, 
but you know, I, I, I guess I just set the height of the, of the point, the crest. You know, that reminds me, you could probably do like a Reese's peanut butter cup gear or something. That would be kind of funny. I don't know why I say that, what that reminds me of. Like, as if a, a, a peanut butter cup gear is a thing. <laughs> it's, it's really not. I assure you, I don't have any of that. So I surface offset again. Surface extend. Oh, I guess it was necessary because looks like I use that copy to actually make the wrapper. Okay, that's fine. So knitting all of that together. Honestly, I give myself a, another B for this one. I don't know why it's missing a thing there. Knit five. And then you can flatten see what it looks like and oh I guess I scaled the peanut butter cup a little bit <laughs> yeah but the last thing I would have done honestly here, let's show even though this is like very thin paper right paper still has thickness I would at least try and thicken this to the thickness of paper which is like three or four thousandths of an inch towards the outside and don't merge. Oh God, that is a, that is a heavy feature. Oh, not, not too bad, but I would have done that basically. Just one of those subtle things, you know? It's the only change I would make here. All right, so has, Firefox finished nuking the computer? And I think the answer is yes. Oh God. All right, so there's that four. So actually we don't need any of this anymore. I wonder if it filtered out all the videos. That would be pretty cool. I think it did actually. All right, so there's one video. Oh, there's a couple here. All right, so let's put this in here. And on that way, it's all translate your thing. Are the top and bottle, are the top and bottom angles? Or, I'm sorry, this is translating this very, very weird. Are the top and bottom angles equal? Or, or are, are the top and bottom angles at the top? So there's two ways to interpret that. And I don't know if tran Google Translate is butchering something here. But so if at the top, if you're talking about this being the bottom and this being the top, they should be equal and basically the extend guarantees that so if i go back here oh i even put filling that's pretty it's pretty dope um anyway actually let's see how i created this So actually, I might have been mistaken. So if the if these two angles are different, then yes, the top will be different because it'll be, yeah. Okay, so it looks like that bottom angle was sixty. So if you're actually if you were talking about that one, then you're right. You were right. Sixty degrees. 
and then it flares up. So yeah, it is actually expanding out as it goes upward. It's flaring out a little bit, very observant. Top and bottom. Yeah, so it starts 60, and when it gets to, when it gets to the top at 75, so here a little bit further, it should have been, should have opened out a little bit more because um, when you have an extend, it's just taking those same surfaces and evaluating those, uh, the mathematical equations under it, under underneath. So if it's expanding at a linear rate, you know, you would expect that to continue. Could even run an experiment if we wanted to, just like extend surface. Yeah, so as you can see, if, if I extend this a lot, you could see the angle is opened up. It's actually obtuse now. Very good questions. All right, let me go back to fixing the uh, this. So now I should have 105 here. Yep, so I have 105. So not, let me also clear out. Well, let's just check this out real quick. Oh my god, 12 straight hours of 3D printing. Regarding the CAD model, the day collage, if you do 44 by 25, it is really close to 16 by 9. That's crazy! Oh my god, yeah, you, you, this is a gold mine of an idea. Absolutely genius. That is so close. I might, I might do that, and, I, and I'm gonna have to shout you out for figuring that out. All right, so that's fine, but I have this in drive, so I'm just gonna permanently delete this. So if I do shift and delete, should be clearing up some of my hard drive space, thank god. And actually, let's go to 105. And these are just more videos, right? Yeah, this is for the little goofy video I made. It's one gig. I think the Instagram video can stay. These can stay. The raw's gonna go. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I love, I love uh, torturing hard drives. It's my favorite. Again, ASM.ASM. Why do, why do I do this? Oh yeah, okay. I shouldn't I shouldn't have did that. Okay, so it's missing a lot of stuff. Don't save. Actually let's just close all of this stuff. Don't save. That's interesting, so If these files aren't in the Google Drive, that's why naming conventions exist. Yep, exactly. Well, this is a different thing. Like I could have named this ASM and that it would have been fine if I had pack and goat it. So what this means is that I had the component files in some other folder and I only clicked and dragged the other one. So which means it's in the rest of it's in my old computer. So I have to go dig that out. Okay, 
I need to I need to like make a list. Let's... Problem cat models of the day. So we need to go 105. Pack and go from old computer. a bus but let's see what else can we check out well, the op1 another synthesizer very cool so actually when that happens let me get this to 200 And I don't think there's any like heavy videos there, although we'll find out, I suppose. Yeah, but this is why I wanted to go through them and, you know, and, and check that the files made it there properly. And, you know, I'm a human. I make mistakes. Sometimes I start at 11.30, sometimes I start at 11.45 with only 15 minutes. These things happened. Yeah, but the interesting thing about this is I began to really learn how much time it takes. You know, like if you look at something like this and you're like, wow, that looks pretty simple, right? It's just squares, circles, and, and slots, right? This probably took me a long time. You know, let's see. Feature properties. So I started this at 1.30. And then ended uh, properties at 320. Even although I don't know if this is the last feature I put, but that's that's two hours in this. I I do a lot of surfacing stuff in like 10, 15 minutes. Like to be clear, like let's we'll compare. This top hat with advanced surfacing takes me 15 minutes. This took me two hours. And that's when I realized that having picking models of the day that have a bunch of little details is always a time consuming endeavor. Not that I never did it. Of course, I, I did a lot of stuff like this. But, you know, if I only had like 15 minutes left, it's just like, no, if it, if it has a bunch of buttons, I can't do it, basically. Unless there was some kind of simple pattern, that is. And I think for this, it was kind of funny. I, I, I probably just filled this all with just buttons. Yeah, it's just filled with buttons. And then just removing and modeling new ones and just try to keep the work down, you know, using patterns. And also a funny thing, I actually domed this screen a little bit, even though it's not domed in real life, just to kind of get like a, this kind of glossy effect. To actually make it look like a screen rather than just a black pane. This is in flat tree. I don't really see it. Yeah, I don't see any underdefined anything. I'll give myself a B plus to an A for this one. It's just real time consuming is all. I probably got you. Sorry and good luck. Oh, it's, uh, not not sure what exactly that's in reference to, but uh, I always appreciate you being here. 
and just supporting the stream by uh, by watching, you know. No worry, like, I, I try and teach people the best way to do things, so it's important to call out when, even if I do something that is not correct, it's important to call that out, you know. Behind the scene question, have you ever tried using an external keyboard or a stream deck? If so, how was it? I have not. It's on the list of things I eventually want to get. It's just something that, um, that I guess I'm not... Well, I guess number one, I haven't really spent the time for it. Two, I'm not that crazy about spending the money right now. That's the other thing. And three, what I have works okay-ish, you know. So I guess I'll, I'll show you what I what I am doing, especially with the dual computer setup. I take this, I take this bad boy. Yeah, so all it is is, um, you know, there's my laptop. Oh, let me, uh, one. Full webcam. Yeah, so basically I just have the laptop there and I just have the two mice, so one that where I'm doing the SOLIDWORKS stuff with, and then this other mouse just connected to the other computer, and I'm just clicking OBS scenes. Yeah, that's that's kind of what I'm working with right now. Nothing fancy. Think of getting myself under some extra keyboard shortcuts. Yes, but still trying to justify the price of it versus the inconvenience of multi-key shortcuts. Um, I think that's just it. You know, most of this this the uh, stream decks I've seen here. Well, you know, let's take a quick look. We can we we can stun lock me for a little bit. Oh, it looks like this finished downloading, so I'll get to that in a sec. Stream Deck. Not Steam Deck. Stream Deck. I think for 30 bucks, it's not bad. I don't think that's an actual thing. It must be like a overlay or something. But yeah, most of them I see are like $100 or so. Or $70. Let's check Amazon. Oh, come on. Oh my god. E L M X X Y. Stream Deck. Yeah, that's about the price I've seen them. Yeah, 150. Yeah, that's a, that's a thing. That's a that's kind of a lot of money for and what is that, 15 extra buttons? Honestly, what I would do, I had something that I bought a long time ago when I was more of a gamer, you know? I'm trying to remember what it was called. Mm. Anchor Mini Keyboard uh, Gaming. Let's see what comes up. It was something like this, one-handed gaming ergonomic keyboard. But the thing is, I don't think, uh, I, I don't know if these keys are reassignable. But if you could find one of these where you can customize every key, you might go for something like this. Because this is $18, that's, that's way different. It's a different story for sure. This one's from Redragons from 42. Yeah, this is this wasn't the exact one I had. I think I hear the I think I hear my dog trying to get in. Yeah, I don't really see anything else, but it was it was similar it was similar to this, basically. So I would like research if this could be modded to um make every key customizable. That would be pretty cool. And you would get basically a, 
a similar experience for a, a lot less money. A wireless log, yeah, exactly. A nice mechanical keyboard for $150. Absolutely. You know, like the keyboard that I really like and I have put somewhere. Oh, it's on my bench over there. Here, let me go let my dog in. scratch to go outward to, to go out of the door again <laughs> are they even visible from this this angle not really they're on the other side of the rug oh, it looks like it's thundering too it's so dark out there. Uh, but yeah, let me get back on track-ish. You know, I'm just, of course, I'm just hanging out at this point. Oh, the keyboard. I was going to show you the keyboard that I have. This keyboard um, this is the Keychron K4 and why I re really like it is um, well it's got all the nice stuff like it's got uh, mechanical keycaps they're removable and replaceable so if you're into uh, doing that you can do that to this model but it's also like a compact model but it still has the numpad so that's why I really like this one in particular hey Vito what's going on Great to see you here, just gaming at 5 a.m. and found the stream. Very good stuff. I'm glad you could stop by a little bit. You know, we were just, I was just roasting myself. You know, just opening up some of my old models and, and seeing how well I put stuff together. You know, not every model was a winner. I have like a dog bed and they, they, just, they just like want me to lay it out except they don't have it in the room so they're looking for it. Just, just sleep on the rug. The rug is fine. I've laid down on the rug. <laughs> Let's see. They're just, they're just out there exploring. I don't know if you see that. Anyway. You gotta go? Alright, no worries, Yaya. Very good to see you, and um, I'm probably gonna be ending the stream in like half an hour or so. You know, and you know what I'll do right now, too? Let me set up another stream for... for uh, next time. Actually, I probably shouldn't do it so, just so I, I don't accidentally reveal my steam, my stream key or something like that. Oh my god, what is this? I have a ton to catch up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we've just been kind of shooting the breeze. What Basically, what I've been doing is I've been downloading all the backups from the model of the day project. And I've just been making sure that I can open them, but also to just go through them for fun and, you know, just see, see, you know, see how I did them overall. I don't 
don't have to save. Oh, I guess, uh, let's, yeah, let's do the metronome. So the metronome was pretty cool. Yeah, so here I actually do have all the parts. Same business. I don't know why I thought it would be a good idea to keep naming them ASM. That's pretty silly. Oh, yeah, I don't know if you noticed there, but put my, put my name on it. Like that. So it's just a classic metronome. And I think what's very cool about this is oh, can we loop repeat oh, <laughs> that doesn't work very well and GIF. oh my god that is flying that is so fast but i believe i uh, rendered this photo view with uh with motion blur this took forever Man, this tempo is flying. That is so fast. Yeah, other than, than uh, file naming issues. And to be honest, I'm not going to be too hard on myself for the file naming thing because it's just, you know, the files are for myself. And, you know, why spend, you know, 20, 15 to 20 minutes renaming files when I could just spend that doing the model? And especially a model that has to be delivered the same day. Why are you scratching at my rug? We have Jackie here just hanging out. You're a good doggy. So definitely with the renaming stuff, I'm going to have to close all. So robot, again with the ASM. Yeah, it's just a little cute little robot thing. Made a long time ago, and I think I 3D printed one of these. Um. Just a little robot. Oh, the dog treat. All right, so. All right, this one, let's see, flat tree. Here's an under underdefined sketch, but this one seems to be text related. Yeah, it's just the endpoints of the center line, so not too bad. Yeah, but um, sad, sad story. So the dog that is shown here. So this is Stella. In this picture, she was, I wanna say two to three years old. Um, yeah, I don't know how else to say this, but Stella has unfortunately passed away. Unfortunately, couldn't even make it. She, she didn't make it until five. She had, um, uh, kidney issues. I miss her a lot, and honestly, I'm I'm glad she's kind of like immortalized in this project. You know, it's very interesting how a lot of the CAD models of the day is almost like <laughs> almost like keeping a journal, keeping a diary. Almost there there are like a lot of models that I made that were basically inspired by the events of that day. And the dog treat, that was a simple one. Yeah, overall pretty
pretty good performance. Five second rebuild time, that's kind of a lot. There is a fillet that is hard. So for some reason, this fillet is very, oh, okay, because it's filleting around the text. That makes sense. It's just a little bit, a uh, little bit strenuous for the computer to calculate. Mm, that was a good one. Uh, graph gear. Oh, I love this. I love this pen. How often do you do I use the fillet expert? Not very often. I'll be perfectly honest. I mean, it does have some cool stuff going for it. Oh, this is pretty cool. I think I modeled this with all the internal components. Yeah, I'm very proud of this model. This is a, you know, other than, you know, naming weirdness. Other than, other than the bits of lead that should be in here, it should have every part. But yeah, I remember um, this Graph Gear mechanical pencil. Um, I was in high school and I was in robotics team and uh, one of my buddies, his name was uh, Diego, I believe, you know, showed me this, this pencil. And it's like, yeah, man, this is the pencil that engineers use. I'm like, wow, that's so cool. So well engineered. You know, I, I bought one. And I think I, at that time I bought the, uh, the 07 lead or 0 0.7 millimeter lead, which is like kind of like the standard one. When I got to college, like, you know, I write with a lot of pressure and I kept breaking the tips. But, you know, when I looked online, I found out that they actually sell, um, 0 0.9 millimeter lead. It's a little more unusual, more uncommon size. And, uh. Yeah, the thicker lead, you know, stands up to my writing pressure pretty well, and it's just a really well-engineered pencil. I think I still have my pencil that I used throughout on practically every exam I ever took in college, pretty much. And it's, like, still working. It's still in one piece. It's pretty amazing. Probably in my bag. Yeah, oh, I'll, I'll search for it. Here it is. Yeah. This very this very pencil. I got I bought this in like 2012 and took every basically every single exam, every bit of handwritten homework at least was made with this. Still works flawlessly. So well engineered. The only thing that you could tell, yeah, if I bring that up really close, but you could see that I've just r basically worn off kind of like the the surface finish a little bit from just using it just that much. How on earth did I not lose it? <laughs> that's that's another thing because I thought you know I can I can be pretty. Doggies, can you not right now? I'm trying to tell a story. But yeah, I, I consider myself pretty forgetful at times and I have like forgotten the, this in rooms and I like went back for it. But I just suppose I've been extraordinarily lucky. So this pencil's 10 years old and I'm just gonna keep using it. Very, but very well engineered. Most other pencils I will lose or I will break. I just love the weight of it too, you know. And yeah, I don't, yeah, I dropped this tons of times because when I have this, like the weight of it is like such, it's like, you know, start like twiddling with it in my hands and I'll try and like twirl it and I'm not very good at it. Yeah, and I just always keep it in my, my uh, backpack that I use when I need to go out with a backpack, which is, 
you know, not often, you know, since I'm a working professional now. Any cool, I, I think it's just, you know, the, the build quality. Uh, overall, the feel of it. You know, how it is to write with it. And the fact that it comes in all sorts of different lead sizes and, you know, that it comes in 0.09 lead. You know, it's like extra thick lead, which is nice. I think I saw a thumbnail of a YouTube video describing, let me see if I can find it. There was a thumbnail saying like why these graph gear, graph gear pencils are so great. Let me see. Um, YouTube. Graph gear 1000. Great. Yeah, I mean, these are reviews, but there was like a, I think, I was pretty sure I saw like a video essay. Yeah. But yeah, they they run about ten dollars. So yeah, ten times the cost of a typical pencil. You know, if you consider a typical pencil as one dollar, or a typical mechanical pencil, that is. It might be even cheaper now. I mean, let's see. One thousand. And I think I think the 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 body is metal. I don't know what. I'm not sure what kind of metal it is. It might be like a zinc or something like that. Well, yeah, here you go for, you know, $8, you get the 0.7 millimeter. Then I use 0.09. Yep. This very pencil. Yeah, it's just pencil stuff, so it's it's pretty good. I mean, it's hard to hard to describe, other than you know getting to hold one at one point, and that's what that's what my buddy Diego, you know, said. Like he 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 lent me this, and it's like here, check this out. This is a drafting pencil. Look how cool it is. And I like felt the weight of it. I'm like wow, this feels really nice to write with, and it's uh, very very comfortable to use. The dogs are they they want to get out the door, so let me let them out real quick. I knew this would happen. They get bored in like three seconds. Yeah, so overall, I really like this model and the fact that it's made with nearly perfect accuracy, I would say this is this is an A-plus model. One of my favorites. Definitely not one of the flashiest, but just based on its completion, its completeness. But yeah. What else? What else? A ball whisk. So this one was a this one was a simple model, but I think I threw threw this in a motion study. So basically, you you make this in the same method as you make um, any animatable spring. Except you have a spherical surface, you have a he helical surface that crosses with it, and yeah, I guess I had I felt the need to animate it because I felt it was so simple. I think Lucas Krupe has a video on that. YouTube. Oh yeah, the, <laughs> I I spoke him into existence, Lucas Krupe, right here.
Yep, here you go. This video. Can I see the sketch to that? Oh, the, the ball? Yeah. Yeah, so let's go into it. So let me show this. So actually, I do it as a sphere. Okay. You could do this as a... Uh, You could do this as a revolved surface, but I guess you could just do it as a regular ball. So, revolve that. Then sketch to the end of this. Let's see. On edge. Oh, this, uh, this is actually a little bit more interesting. I forgot. So this is the sketch. Uh, this is the sketch that I thought would be a ball. It's not. It's a, it's an ellipse. Well, right now it's a circle because, you know, when you have a, an ellipse that the axes are the same, it's a circle. But if I take this out or suppress it, let's see. External. So we're going to suppress that. And I'm going to delete these comments. And I can report spam. Oh, actually, I should just report because then it actually takes it out. Report spam. Okay, good stuff. All right, so I've suppressed that. And when I bring this down, you can see it compresses this. And now, yeah, this sketch just needs to be basically a convert entity of that axis. This should probably have a length to it just to make sure it's longer than this, but you just do a surface sweep and just say specify twist value and I just put eight as an example. So you should have two surfaces like this and you should have something rebuilding just like that. So the secret is the ellipse. Yeah, and then I guess I use a 3D sketch with intersection curve to actually bring the helix out, which then I sweep along. That's That makes sense. Yeah, this is actually a little bit more interesting than I remember. I remember feeling very bad that I thought this was like lazy. Overall football shaped <laughs> kind of thing. If I do it like this. Oh, yeah, that one's kind of cool. What else we got? Oh, I remember this. So, if you've never played Super Mario World, you know, of course, one of one of the best Nintendo games ever, I would say. Absolute classic. Yeah, this game, there are uh, these blocks called speaker blocks. Let's do speaker block. Singular. Or is it a message block? That's really tiny. Well, wow, picture for ants, am I right? But yeah, a message block looked like that, so it's like a little speaker. 
and I thought, wouldn't it be cool to have like a like a, a Mario World themed speaker, like Bluetooth speaker, where you could play music? And I've always wanted to like 3D print it and produce one, you know, uh, out of like a. I would buy a Bluetooth speaker and basically rewire the buttons and stuff. You know, but now since I'm uh, no longer doing dailies. Yeah, just like a jukebox, exactly. I can, maybe I can actually get this done. I think it would be very cool. You know, put it here. To do. So, what number is this one again? It's 13. To do, 013, produce, Super Mario World. Yeah, this this I can totally do. All right, it's actually getting getting pretty close to time where I actually need to uh, head out and and uh, do something with my family. So I think I'm gonna end the stream pretty soon here. This was pretty fun. And uh, here, let me see if I can go on my other computer. Let me set up the other one right now. So create, go live, schedule stream. Um, I'm gonna set it for 5 p.m. next week too. Quick summary on next, as in what I'm gonna do for the next streams. I think that in the for the immediate future is just going to be reviewing some of the more interesting uh, CAD model of the days. Doesn't necessarily have to be one one by one like I'm doing like I did right now. I might also decide to do fun stuff like uh, you know try and install SolidWorks on the Steam Deck and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, if, I'm also I mean if you have any specific models you want me to look he's like hey I, I didn't know how you did number 690 could you could you pull it up and we look at it together yeah of all the surfacing that's another thing i'd need to do is not not only go through the models of the day and you know make sure that i have all the files intact but also i want to go and tag when a specific technique is used like you know, like here has surfacing, so I would tag this as surfacing because it has surfacing in it. You know, but only thing stopping me for the CSWE. I can I can help you with that, man. Yeah, and maybe I want to see what the practice exam looks like now. It's probably the same. So, do you have the surfacing cert already, and you're just waiting? You're just uh, you're studying for the CSWE now, or do you not have the advanced cert yet? Got all the rest in the bag. No cert. All right, no worries. Uh, certification practice. Ooh, they freshened up this page a little bit. Oh, come on, can't you just give me a... So let me see this. this. I'm just wondering if it's it's the same or not. Okay, yeah, this is the same. And to be honest, I think the actual certification is harder than what the practice exam gives. Um, let me see here. Let me see if I can find my old... So here, here's the thing I'm going to do. I can't show or publish the actual exam files on the internet in any capacity. 
you know, they'll they'll get mad at me if I do that, and I think it's not it's not good ethics for teaching either. So I I wouldn't want to do that. But what I want to do is see if I can dig up my old files and basically see the techniques that they use and either a find cab models of the of the day that exemplify those strategies or b just invent my own where it's like the same techniques but in a different model file or in a different yeah like a different model because the thing is like i wouldn't want to uh, you know the thing is like i have been reached out to by solidworks corp by uh you know i remember back in the day i actually um I had a surfacing book that I followed, and I did a YouTube video on one of them. And they made me take it down, basically. It's like, yeah, it's way too close to what we have on the exam. You have to take it down. And I took it down. Alright, gonna go eat? Alright, sounds good, man. I think I'm gonna end the street stream here. So, for those of you watching... Oh, yeah, let me at least get the new thing started. So, let's just reuse settings... Hey. Well, I guess I have to stop. So I, I I have to set it up. But I'll I'll set up a stream for next Saturday. And you know I'll be live back then. We'll keep going with some stuff. But if and if you have anything that you want me to show you or do. Just let me know, you know, I'm, I'm free. And, you know, we'll just take it from there, all right? Is there anything here? Here. Right, I'll go back to here. All right. So, yep, thanks for joining this evening. I really appreciate you supporting me even after the project is over. You know, let's, uh, let's create some new stuff together. And I will see you next week, all right? Bye-bye.